Hi, my name is Rose, and I'm an explainer here at the Exploratorium. And I'm going to do a cow eyeball dissection. So here we have a cow eyeball, and they are very similar to human eyeballs, which is the reason we dissect them. So by learning about a cow eyeball, we can learn about how our eyeballs work. So one of the biggest differences between a cow eyeball and a human eyeball is the size. Cow eyeballs are two to three times bigger than the average human eye, as you can see here. So we'll start with the outside of the eyeball. Here we have some muscle tissue, and this is useful for, you know, looking around. But cows can actually do something else with their eyeballs that we can't. They can actually pull their eyeball back into their socket a little bit, just a bit, so that this um, thing called a nictitating membrane, or third eyelid, can cover their eyeball so that they can be protected when they're grazing, because grass can be very, very sharp. We also have fat tissue around our eyeball. This is uh, this whitish pink stuff right here. And this acts as cushioning because our eyeballs sit in our skull and our skull is a very hard bone. So we need some cushioning to make sure our eye doesn't get damaged. We can also see the optic nerve, which is this right here. And this is connected to the brain. So I'm gonna cut off all the fat in the muscles so we can see the eyeball a bit better. Here we have our eyeball, it's a bit cleaner now. So we're gonna follow the path of light. So light enters through the cornea, which is this front part of the eye. It looks a little milky and bluish right now, but it's usually clear. And this is so that light can pass through un unimpeded. It's a bit like a window. But here this cow is dead. The eyeball has started to break apart, started to decompose. So it's become discolored. So the cornea has two main functions. It protects to make sure things don't get inside the eyeball, but it also focuses light. And you can see that it looks a bit like a magnifying glass with a nice round shape. Now this does most of the focusing. It does about 70 to 80% of the focusing versus something inside the eye does the rest. So now I'm going to make an incision into the cornea so we can see what's right underneath. And now it's pretty thick on a cow, thinner on a human, but still a nice protective layer. So you can see this um, cloudy brown fluid creep into the front of the eye and discolored it. Now this is called the aqueous humor, and it acts like blood for the eye, but without being red. So normally it is clear, and it nourishes the cornea, brings it oxygen, nutrients, and um, filters out waste. And it acts just like blood, but without being red. It also um, keeps the round shape of the cornea. As you can see, without that fluid there, the cornea has become deflated, and it's not very good for focusing light anymore. And now I'm going to make an incision into the sclera. So now I've separated the front of the eye from the middle and the back of the eye. So right behind the cornea, we have the iris ring, which is this dark ring around the hole. Now this hole is the pupil. So cows have a, an oval shaped pupil and also their eyes are on the sides of their head to give them better peripheral vision so that they can look out for predators. Our pupil is a round shape. So now I can separate the iris ring from the front of the eye. And this is a muscle, and you may have noticed your pupil get bigger or smaller, depending on how much light there is. So if it's very bright out, this muscle will squeeze, it will contract to make the pupil smaller so that too much light doesn't get in, because that could damage the back of the eye. And if it's pretty dark out, this will expand, and the pupil will get bigger to let more light in, so that you can see better. And you can also see on my hand there is this brown uh, pigment, and this is melanin, and it is like our natural sunblock, and we find it in our iris ring, in our hair, and in our skin. And it gives, it gives all of these things their color. So if you have more melanin, you're going to have darker eyes, darker hair, and darker skin, so you're going to be less, less apt to get sunburn. Now if you have less of it, you're going to have lighter, lighter eyes, lighter skin, and lighter hair. And this just depends on your ancestry. So if your ancestors are more recently from Africa, you know you're going to have more melanin, more sun protection, versus if you know they're from Northern Europe, you're going to have lighter skin and less melanin. 
So light will go through the cornea, get nice and focused, go through the pupil, and then it will hit this right here. Now this is called the vitreous body, and it's made up of three parts. This is the lens on the top, this is the ciliary muscle, and this is the vitreous humor. So the lens is the other magnifying glass in our eye. Our cornea does most of the focusing, about 70 to 80 percent, versus the lens finishes the job and does that other 20 to 30. And now your lens can change shape depending on what distance you're looking at. So if you're looking at something close up, that muscle will squeeze the lens into a fatter, rounder shape so that you can focus on something close up. And if you want to look, at, look far away, this will relax and kind of pull it flatter to help you look at something far away. Now you can't focus on two things at once because you can't be in two places at once. So this, right, this uh, ring right here, this is another muscle, the ciliary muscle, which squeezes the lens. But we also have the ciliary process here. And the ciliary process is what produces the aqueous humor, which is the liquid that squirted out in the, in the beginning. So if you have glaucoma, it may be a problem with your ciliary process. Maybe you're producing too much of it. So now I'll take the lens off. And now your lens is made up of layers. So you can actually squeeze it and take off layers. So you're born with a core lens, which is a different consistency. It's more of a waxy feeling versus the outer layers are squishier. So you're born with a core lens. You're gonna build up more layers on your lens. So, and it will also get thicker and less flexible and it will get thicker and less flexible. So the, the muscle, the ciliary muscle, will have a hard time squeezing a thick, unflexible lens, so you're more likely to need reading glasses as you, as you age. There's the lens. And then that sits on top of this fluid here, the vitreous humor. It's made up of water and protein, so it's very slippery, but it still has a little bit of structure to it. It's a bit like jello. And now this keeps the eyeball round. As you can see, we no longer have an eyeball without the vitreous humor there. Its vitreous humor is also responsible for keeping the retina flat on the back of the eye. And the retina is where you see this blood vessel. It's this layer that comes off very, very easily. So we need to have something keeping it flat on the back of the eye or it will become detached. And this happens if you get hit in the head, or for other reasons, it will get detached and you won't be able to see at that point. Now our retina is made up of photoreceptors, which are little light receiving cells. And we have two types of them. We have rods, which look like rods, and we have cones, which look like cones. So our rods are dispersed all throughout the retina, but particularly on the periphery. And this is useful because they're motion sensitive cells. If something's moving out of the corner of your eye, your rods are able to sense that so that you can see that something's moving there so you can check and make sure it's not a predator. They also work in dim light. And so that's what you're using in your night vision. They're not color sensitive, so we are not able to see colors very well at night. But they're responsible for dim light. So if you're ever stargazing and looking for a very dim star, if you look off to the side a little bit, that light will reach your cones on the side of your retina and you'll be able to see something there. Versus if you look straight at it, that light will hit your cones, which are not sensitive to dim light. Now our cones are sensitive to bright light and they're also color sensitive. And they're concentrated in the middle of the retina at this point called the fovea, where our vision is sharpest. And your cones help you see detail and color. And we can see three different types of color. We can see red, green, and blue. And these are the three primary colors of light. So if you're seeing yellow light, for example, that will set off your green cones and your red cones, and you'll be able to see yellow. Or if you're seeing purple light, you, your, cones will, your red cones and your blue cones will go off, and then you'll see purple. And if all three of them go off, you'll see white light. So you can also see there's a blood vessel there nourishing the retina. And this is because the retina is like brain tissue. It, it does a lot of processing, so it needs a steady supply of oxygen and nutrients. So now I'm gonna scrape the retina off. And you can see it comes off very, very easily. This retina is now completely detached. 
and you can see that it hangs from one point. So your retina is only attached at that one point, and that point is called the optic disc. Now at the optic disc, there are no photoreceptors because all of the, the photoreceptors are connected through this hole. So you're not seeing any light at this point. So we have a blind spot in our vision. But then why don't I see a blind spot? Well, we have two eyes, so it kind of fills in the image for us. And basically our brains are really good at filling images in. So we rarely notice our blind spot unless uh, you try one of our exhibits here at the Exploratorium where we find your blind spot. So the retina cells are connected through the optic disc to the optic nerve. Now this is connected to the brain. It goes all the way to the back of the brain where it's called the visual cortex. So actually if you got hit in the back of the head hard enough, you would not be able to see because the processing part of your brain, the visual processing part of your brain would no longer work. So we have fibers in our optic nerve. We have a lot of them. We have 1.2 million fibers in this optic nerve. So they are very, very tiny and there are a lot of them. And this is why we don't give eye transplants because if a doctor was trying to connect all 1.2 million fibers, they would take their entire lifetime. And they're microscopic, so that's not gonna work. So the last thing we're gonna talk about is something that cows have that we do not have. And this is this shiny layer, this nice turquoise colored layer. This is called a tapetum, and we do not have this. We have, uh, the back of our eye is black like this, but cows have this shiny layer. Um, some other animals have it as well. If you've ever seen a cat or a dog's eyes glowing, that's because they have a tapetum on the back of their eye. And this is useful for animals that need to see in the dark. So if you remember, the retina was on top of this. So when light comes in and hits the retina, not all of it gets absorbed. Some of it passes through. And on a human, it will get absorbed by this black backdrop. But on a cow, the extra light will bounce off of the tapetum onto the retina, so more light hits the retina so they can see better in the dark. And this is useful for cows because they like being awake at dawn and dusk. Now this is nice to see in the dark, but it can also make your vision a bit fuzzy because sometimes the reflection doesn't work exactly right.